everyone. My name is Deepak Krishnan. I am here to present my architectural thesis in front of you all. My thesis topic is Cancer Rehabilitation Center. First, we will quickly go through the background study. Rapid growth of abnormal cells in the short period of time is defined as cancer. Cancers can be cured if it is diagnosed in the early stages by through different methods like surgery, therapies, and treatments. Cancer can develop in any part of the body. There are more than 200 types of cancers. The major cancers are stomach cancer, breast cancer, liver cancer, and brain cancer. Global perspective. The current record says there are 12 million new registered cases in the past five years because of cancer. Also, the expert believes that if this rate increase, there will be nearly 17 million new cases registered by 2025. Other than damage caused by the cancer, there will be a lot of side effects due to the treatment which involves a lot of therapies which will lead a person into physical stress, financial stress and mental stress. Few people take their own time and support to come back to their normal life from the damage caused by the disease. Cancer Rehabilitation Center is an healthcare facility which focuses mainly on the patients who survive cancer but need some time and care to come back to their normal life. The main aim of the project is to design a modular healthcare system which helps in rehabilitating patients within building envelope. The main objective of the project is to have a relationship between now and built and unbuilt space documentary video on and also to create an and like ecosystem within the site boundary. Here I am gonna explain about the literature case study of one of famous projects. Maggie's Cancer Center, Manchester location Manchester, United Kingdom Architects, Foster Plus Partners Area, 1922.0 square meters year of completion, 2016 Manufacturers, Bloomer Lehman, 3 volts architectural hardware, Aurobus located across Britain and abroad, Maggie's centers are conceived to provide a welcoming, home away from home, a place of refuge where people affected by cancer can find emotional and practical support. Inspired by the blueprint for a new type of care set out by Maggie Keswick Jenks, they place great value upon the power of architecture to lift the spirits and help in the process of therapy. The design of the Manchester Centre aims to establish a domestic atmosphere in a garden setting and, appropriately, is first glimpsed at the end of a tree-lined street, a short walk from the Christie Hospital and its leading oncology unit the building occupies a hinge over a single story, keeping its profile low and reflecting the residential scale of the surrounding streets. The roof rises in the center to create a mezzanine level, naturally illuminated by triangular roof lights and it is supported by lightweight timber lattice beams. The beams act as natural partitions between different internal areas, visually dissolving the architecture into the surrounding gardens. The center combines a variety of spaces, from intimate private niches to a library, exercise rooms and places to gather and share a cup of tea. Introduction about Karunashrai It's located in Old Airport Varthud Main Road, Mara Hall Kundalahalli Gate, Bangalore, India. The total site area is 5 aces. The total built-up area is 1.5 aces. The main concept of Karunashrai is, with the layout, there was a smooth flow of activities through various spaces, simple and clearly demarcated layout and incorporates nature in and around the buildings. For the interior, the spatial and furniture arrangement further enhanced the concept of inhibited circulation through the spaces, the color, lighting, scale, treatment of the spaces, and finishes also depicted the concept of lightness within the spaces. For the exterior, the use of hard and soft landscaping, water features, good facade treatment, sounds from birds and water, the wind and rustling leaves will all aid in the design. So 
services provided 85 bed and patient facility provided currently, home care facility staffs are available, residential health assistance training program for adult women from lower economic groups who are later employed as health assistants in the hospice or deployed to homes, donated goods if cannot be used, they will be sold at a shop or through charity sales support needs for the poor, medical treatments for curing the disease is not provided but the nurses take care of the patients by providing them with basic medical support like morphine is given to patients suffering from severe pain and also regular checkups are done, other educational initiatives including workshops, conferences and awareness programs on palliative care, psychological issues in patient care for nurses, counselors and volunteers, programs in partnership with the Indian Association of Palliative Care, IAPC. Architectural features The building is situated in 8,200 square area plot and the total build-up area is 3,400 square. The building is stone structure with composite masonry. The building is designed in a way that all rooms of the patients receive natural lighting and ventilation. The patients can relax with a view of greenery on one side and water on other of their ward. The building has five to house in patient wards. Recreational activities include indoor games, watching TV, newspaper etc. A 100-seat auditorium is provided which is fully equipped with modern communication facilities for conferences and training. The kitchen caters are approximately 100 in number provide food three times a day. Four bore wells dug initially yielded about 10,000 liters per hour feeding two large overhead tanks. Solar energy is used to serve power to the lightning in the wards and also exterior. Site plan The facility occupies about 30% of the site and the other 70% for landscape which includes open pavilions, healing gardens and courtyards and future development. The soft landscape part of the site provides the ideal setting for natural therapy and can also be used to create a serene and warm atmosphere courtyards and landscaping. Emphasis was placed on the use of courtyards in the design to aid the ventilation of the internal spaces, create meeting places to meet and interact, and create semi-private and private areas for the patients. The design makes extensive use of landscape elements such as fountains, ponds, rockeries and statuaries, greenery and pavers. This is due to the fact that a serene and environmentally interactive space is needed in such a hospice facility to enhance peaceful and tranquil experience of patients and their families. The main entrance to the facility is shrouded with heavily shaded trees. To the right of the entrance is a high-pressure pumped rock waterfalls with stepping stones leading to it. The main concept of the project is to have an interlink between the built and unbuilt spaces. Human body is directly connected to the nature and its surroundings. The concept of healing architecture includes various factors like light, art, sound, personal space, social space, outdoor space etc. All these factors will directly or indirectly influence on the patient health. Healing architecture will focus on these key factors for better design. The connectivity between the built envelope and unbuilt space is very important. Now I am going to explain about my site. My, I have taken my site in the Sriyanka Patna. Sriyanka Patna locates between the two major urban cities. One is Mysore and another is Bangalore. The site is located close to the Kaveri River Bank. This is the proposed site which is next to the Kaveri River which is around 10 acres. There is an 8 meter wide road which will connect to the main road of the Sriram Patna town also to the Bangalore Mysore Highway. The site is situated away from the urban envelope which makes an habitable space for this project. The site is gradually sloping towards the river side. These are the few photographs of the site. The site consists of a beautiful view towards the river Kaveri. Concept development. On the basis of users, the zoning is done with respect to the site. Also to have an intermediate built and open space, large courtyards, 
green spaces are provided. This is a conceptual model. With respect to the site, this therapeutic center and OPD are facing towards the river view to have a maximum experience of the site. Also, the service areas and the administration is on the other side where the entries also differs with respect to the users. This is a site plan of a rehabilitation center. From the main road, there is a single access to the site where inside the site, entries are defined with respect to users. This is a service entry, also an administrative entry, also a main entrance for the OPD patients. There are intermediate courtyards between the different blocks. The parking facility for the users are separated. In the entrance, there is a parking for the OPD patients. Also, in front of the administrative entrance, there is parking for the administrative people. And there is also a parking facility for the service workers at the, behind the building. There is also a shaded pathway for the patients to have their routine. This is an elevational view. Now we will go through individual floor plans. There are three floors in this building envelope. This is the ground floor plan. The ground floor consists of OPD, therapy, administrative block, service block, radiology department. This is a circulation map with indicating with respect to different user types. The vertical circulation is connected to ramp and lifts. This view shows the main entrance to the building. This view shows the recreation and the family area in the ground floor. This is first floor plan. First floor mainly consists of operation department, ICU, general wards, male and female, gym, an indoor game area, yoga room, and, and recreation space. Also, there is a family area which is on the top of a service department, which consists of a terrace garden. This view shows the family recreation area in the first floor, also a terrace garden where the, some part of the food will be grown in this region. This view shows the service entrance to the building, also this view shows the main entrance view to the site. This is second floor plan. The second floor consists of individual wards, two bed shared wards, an open library, and a terrace garden. This is the section of the building which shows the different heights. Also, this view shows a shaded pathway for the patients for their routine exercise. The current day scenario shows the requirement of re-adaptive use of the buildings. This design will help in future to re-adapt in any circumstances. 